more time. Do you want to die? Answer me! Do you want to die? Because I'm helping you. Get, get away from me! Doesn't matter what we want, does it? We, we don't get what we want. I didn't want him to die, but he did. He died and he left me behind. And I'm so angry. Yes, angry. At what? Everything. At what? At him. I'm angry at him for, for leaving me. Huh. For making me think the disability doesn't matter because you know what? It does. Hello everyone, this is episode number four of Community Talks. Welcome to the show. Today we are talking with the one and only Paul Power. Hello Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you Paul. Uh, thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I... Uh... Uh, for the past several years, I've been uh, putting a lot of effort and work into uh, my own production company called Power Productions, and um, it, it's a theater company. It uh, has a mandate furthering the um, the careers or even the interests in um, either uh, uh, people who would like to explore getting involved in theater or uh, people who have been involved and and want to want to further that involvement in our community, but the company's mandate is to further the interest and accessibility of people who identify as living with a disability or who are deaf or even um, unseen disabilities that we have uh, that have been identified these days uh, in regards to mental health, um, that kind of thing. And I got interested in doing that because Paul Power uh, lives with a physical disability as well. Um, since birth, I've had um, uh, complications with my legs, uh, which require leg braces and crutches for extra support uh, to help me with mobility. And um, I went up through the uh, regular school system and uh, high school and university. And um, that's really where, where I got involved in theater for the first time was like university. Once I graduated, I continued on uh, with theater, uh, auditioning for parts, being in involved in different roles and plays um, here in the community, as well as working uh, behind the scenes sometimes, like uh, lighting or stage management, all that. For many, many years, um, I didn't see anybody else who identified with a disability being involved in theater in our community. I'm talking about like the 90s and uh, the early 2000s, um, as far as I knew. I, I felt like the only one, the only one with a physical disability involved in the local arts community or theater community. I had to uh, adapt to an able-bodied world or a world that maybe wasn't totally accessible. Um, I had great directors and that who were who were very welcoming and very supportive, but um, it was still feeling uh, as an individual artist, I was the only one who maybe had uh, accessibility needs or um, uh, certain um, certain ways of doing things that were what we say, like, I guess, I hate using this word, but I haven't found another one yet. <laughs> um, some stuff that were is outside the norm or the regular practice of how people do things. Um, and so uh, about uh, the early 90s or mid 90s, I, I started writing my own pieces um, because I also noticed in the works that were being uh, shown or displayed in uh, St. John's and surrounding areas, uh, rarely had a diverse uh, diversity on stage or tackled anything that had to do with uh, living with a disability. Um, and I wanted to see more of representation on stage. So uh, in my writing, uh, I've had a few plays produced and uh, my most, most recent one was called Crippled, which was, I guess, the most high profile play that I have ever written um, that toured and all that sort of thing. And it calls for a person with a disability to be in a role. And um, I'm, so I'm trying to further, uh, if any other people wanted to do those works, it really challenges a director to cast with uh, a person who identifies with some kind of disability. Um, it doesn't even challenge, it calls for um, in my works. Uh, I ask as, as a playwright, do not cast someone who is, uh, doesn't have a disability. I'm just going to pretend that they do. Um, I want actual actors and artists 
uh, who live with a disability who have that experience to uh, bring that experience to a role. Um, and so that's where I really got into advocacy and, and the arts community and, uh, and really uh, campaigning for diversity on our stages and off. So uh, would it be right to say that why you started up our production to see more diversity on stage to get more people a uh, better chance to be part of the arts? Absolutely. Myself included growing up, you know, whether that be on stage or films or, or TV, um, it's very rare to see, uh, it was very rare to, for some, for me, to see someone on our stage or on screen who looks like me or mm -hmm. has the same life experience as I do uh, as a person who uh, lives with a disability. Growing up like that, why would you think that there is a place for you on the stage or on, the, on a screen if uh, there is never anybody who represents your, uh, your physical, your physicality or your life experience? You know, I'm a big believer in uh, showing rather than telling. So. Um, that's why it's so important I, I campaign for diversity on stage. I'm also very grateful to a lot of directors from various companies who casted me. And I think that, had, that has an impact when you do that and showing diversity on stage through how you cast um, will allow people from different walks of life, different uh, physical circumstances uh, to see themselves or at least so you see diversity on stage. And uh, it really helps uh, the mind in considering I, I could do that. I would like to be involved with that. Look, that person's done it. Why can't I? And, and that sort of thing. It, it's that motivator. I, uh, I can actually relate to a lot of what you say. As you know, uh, I'm in the arts community as well. Obviously not as uh, blood and log into it as you have been. But yes. over years, I find myself diving deeper and deeper into the arts community, whether it's with my, uh, my company, or whether it's your workshops for your acting that I did, which I really enjoyed and looking forward to again. Uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. There are not very many people in the arts community to represent people like us. Even when they have a role, like I'll give you an example. Uh, have you ever heard of Speechless? Yes. Yeah. called Speechless. <laughs> It's a good show. I thought it was really nice and it really sold a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff in terms of disability. But then I found out that the actor itself is not disabled. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of debate right now in the arts community. Um, uh, my my, uh, my area of expertise is that uh, theater, but um, you know, it's uh, uh, the 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 culture or a community that you're representing in your works, it should be represented in, um, in casting and in, in, in writing and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, there, there's a lot of debate right now um, with, with, that, with that sort of scenario. And uh, it's become, I like it, it's become less and less acceptable um, to cast uh, someone who has not who, who is not a representation of that community, such, such as the deaf community, such as um, uh, the disability community, um, um, even ethnicity or um, uh, sexuality. Uh, we had a we had a great project with Power Productions last year, and it was called uh, Private Eyes, and it was a it was a celebrating uh, GLBTQ and two spirited community, and we invited writers to uh, write their own pieces, and then. Um, actors who portray it in that. And, and we really made a call out to the GLBTQ and two-spirited community to do that rather than um, have people who have not lived that experience. Um, so I think that goes for the disability community too. Um, it's, it's a catch-22, hey, it's like, I, I don't want I don't want to see someone like, or I don't want to give someone a role if they're not, you know, if they can't carry the weight of the role, if they can't, if they can't tax or something, just just because of their physicality. Um, although we've seen that many times in Hollywood or whatever, someone who's really, really good looking and can't act <laughs> at all. But but um, besides that, um, I think when when you see these roles that are, I'd like to see each director or casting agent or whoever it is make that solid effort to uh, search for that uh, physicality for for that lived experience. Um, you know, uh, and then after uh, an equal 
uh, casting call um, determined it on the best person uh, who can who can act the role or or that. Um, but that's not happening. That's not happening in um, in Hollywood. It's not happening in community theater a lot. I don't think either. It's it's a, making that effort, making that concentrated effort um, for inclusion. I'm, I'm noticing that more and more as I go. Like people are just not used to seeing people with disabilities in the arts. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing that you're trying to get that out there more and you're trying to get more disabled people in the arts. So uh, I think it's really great work that you're doing with our uh, power production. And again, I said earlier, I can't. Can't wait to get started up on our acting classes again. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell your listeners and or your viewers um, who don't know, like, uh, yeah, uh, Josh has been involved in power productions for a uh, few years now, and um, he's, as well as a great comedian, he's a he's a great actor, and um, uh, I love working with him. And it's so great to see um, other talents being. You, being uh, being used and, or being willing to uh, appear on stage and all that. Yeah, well, uh, I'm open to also do uh, kind of the same thing you're doing, trying to get more people with disabilities in the arts community. And I got to say, Accessible NL, um, she was like Power Productions. Uh, we talked a lot about personal uh, arts experience, but uh, it's also our mandate and yours as well for accessibility. Um, for audience members and that as well um, for community events and that sort of thing. And um, uh, we could have another show on that, <laughs> it's, um, but it's, it's really important uh, when, when community organizers are holding events or when, when we can again, maybe in 2022, um, to keep that accessibility in mind and, and what is accessibility, you know, it reaches far beyond a ramp. Yeah. Uh, New Valley as of right now is not obviously not very accessible, but I truly believe it has the potential to be a crown jewel with accessibility. I truly believe New Valley can be that. It's going to be a lot of work and it's going to take many years. I believe that too. I believe that in the theater community too. Uh, we have an opportunity uh, for New Valley to be uh, a national leader in uh, the arts. Now, um, early on, you mentioned uh, briefly about a disability you have. I'm wondering if you would be comfortable uh, going into more detail about your disability. It's not that I'm uncomfortable talking about it. It's it's hard to do, it's hard to uh, define because uh, I was born with uh, well, my legs didn't develop correctly. Um, mm -hmm. We have a uh, bone structure and uh, muscles, and I was actually born with like used legs in like an, almost like in a kneeling position. There's, there was there was no name on it at the time, um, and it didn't develop correctly. So, uh, in my um, in my stature, uh, my legs are uh, considerably shorter than the rest of my body, um, and weaker uh, because of. Uh, lack of bone density and muscles, um, which we, which is why I wear leg braces and uh, use crutches for for that support. Um, but I've always had a hard time growing up uh, defining it because um, I believe it was a combination of various um, complications while being developed in the womb and that sort of thing. Um, and they never ever, I think it's a combination of like three or four uh, terms uh, that I can never remember. They're like this long or whatever but that's how I describe it and um, uh, when I was when I was uh, I think 14 or 15 I had a major surgery um, I, I described that these late my legs were like sort of in a kneeling position and fused like that um, 14 or 15 I had a major surgery that uh, they, they cut out bone and straightened the legs um, so I have straighter legs now even though the, the height of my legs are still rather short um, and but that was like a defining moment in my life uh, in way of physicality and it improved my life. It, it helped me get around a lot easier and uh, aesthetically just looked looked better, you know, um, than always looking like you're in a, a kneeling or seat, seated position. Um, I can, I can kind of relate to uh, 
I can I can relate to what you mean by hard to define your disability. Oh, I'll keep it short, but I had a brain imagery when I was That's a child. Nice. Yeah. When I was 10 months old, I was in the car accident and it damaged my brain stem. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have a term for it. It all it is is a brain stem injury. And a brain, my brain stem injury could be drastically different from someone else's brain stem injury. And then the thing about disabilities is we're all like snowflakes. Not in terms of like emotional or anything, but we're in terms of snowflakes in terms of like we're, we're just so different. Right. It's, it's person, even if they got the same disability as another person, could be completely different. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, so, um, yeah, it always bugs me, uh, you know, whatever organizations or programs, government programs, they want they want to fill in that little box, right, with the, with the term. And it's very hard. And I see yeah. that's not looking at the individual. But then what brought you to accessible NL? I really value the work uh, of accessible NL. I think it's, I think it's very parallel um, to power productions in the way of putting stuff out there that our community rarely hears or questions. And um, accessible NL is um, putting accessibility at the forefront of everybody's minds. Um, and that helps power productions, helps me as an individual. Um, I think you guys with your leadership are changing um, what, is accept what is acceptable in our community or what is acceptable in businesses. And um, I know you've raised a lot of issues um, and it's just about uh, being able to be more social, to um, access uh, social settings, you know, even downtown or, and, and for me, um, going to theaters, that sort of thing. And um, it's really helped uh, start a cultural shift, I think, here in St. John's um, of questioning, you know, what, what are human rights? What, what is, is accessibility a human right? I believe it is. And I believe that's um, what you're challenging everyone to to adopt. So uh, the last question I have for you today, Paul, what do you have on the go? Well, thank you for asking. Um, March and April, we're going to be doing some uh, workshops again uh, uh, online. Uh, and we're going to uh, be doing, we launched a series, an improv series called Goon River. And that's all done online. And we're going to launch another season of that in the spring. Uh, I'm also excited uh, that my show uh, called Crippled, um, the play, um, it's going to be published uh, over the summer. And uh, we're going to be doing um, uh, a limited run or, or remount of that show for a few times uh, during the summer. And uh, so I'm really excited about getting back in action. Um, and everybody can go to uh, the website powerproductions.ca to keep up uh, on what's going on. And I encourage uh, your viewers to even check out the website and our workshops. I'd love to see more people get involved in our, our uh, acting workshops, which is for anyone, uh, all levels of uh, experience, but they're specifically uh, tailored for persons who identify with some kind of disability. And um, we uh, work to make sure that that's accessible depending on your uh, disability. Um, and. Uh, these days, um, I think it's one of the things is really good. We can do that, that online. Um, it's not a, um, it's not as hard to get out and uh, participate in the workshops. Uh, you can do it from your home, but um, I'd love to see new faces uh, of people who identify as having a disability get involved. I, I'd love to hear from you and, and definitely a spot is waiting for you in a workshop. Well, thank you very much, Paul, and I will let everyone know that these workshops are a lot of fun. I've been there a couple of times, and I try to recommend it, and hey, you might even see me there, too. Thank you very much, Paul, for coming on. You've been a fantastic guest. Thank you, Josh. It was, it was really a lot of fun, and thank you for doing this.
it's not, it's not the safest place to be hanging out in the middle of the night by yourself, alone, down on the waterfront. Sure, I could be a murderer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? If I was a murderer, do you think I'd tell you? Well, I don't know. I haven't met too many murderers. Just saying, it's not the safest place. I can take care of myself. Can I ask you what happened to your partner? How do you know something happened? I, you said Jim used to be your partner's baby great. Yeah. He broke up. No. No. He died. A little over three years ago. Sorry, man, that's rough. Thank you. So what happened to you? I really am. Don't want to talk about it. No way. Not my business. <laughs> I'm sure most people are very accepting. I hate that word. Accepting. You know, all my life I've been someone who has to be, uh, except back in Shell Harbor, I wasn't just a, a little boy, a crippled little boy. The name stuck. I remember being like four years old and, and describing myself as crippled. It wasn't a negative term, it was just a description. Good description. I, I looked it up in the dictionary to become uh, unable to move or walk properly. Pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Oh. Go ahead and jump. What are you waiting for? Why? Go ahead, are you mulling it over? You know, you ought to be fairly sure of what you want before you do something so violent. Once you're dead, you're dead. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Do you wanna die? Answer me! Do you want to die? Because I'll help you. Get, get away from me! Doesn't matter what we want, does it? We, we don't get what we want. I didn't want him to die, but he did. He died and he left me behind. And I'm so angry. Get angry at what? Everything. At once! At him! I'm angry at him for, for leaving me. <laughs> for making me think the disability doesn't matter because you know what? It does! I'm angry at you for asking me about it. I'm angry that I have to walk around on two crutches. I'm angry that guys like Carl can make me feel like some kind of deep work outcast. Just a few words. Yeah. Yeah, I'm angry. I want to know what it's like to, to, to run in the field or, or just jump up out of bed in the morning without having to attach mechanical splints to my legs. You got it. Like any other guy. Nothing to look at. No, no doors needed to be held open. That's first. That was the most important action of my life. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I see you made it to the end of the video. Why not help us out by hitting that subscribe button? and commenting down below to let us know how we did. And I'll see you in the next video.